So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be showing you how to do a new skill that whenever you go into business, it will save you a lot of time, all right? Even if you've got like birthday invites or family parties you're arranging, if you've got all of their addresses in a spreadsheet, you can actually do something very, very quickly, all right? Now, what we've got here is what the requirements are of your letter, all right? So what you can see here is name and address, the greeting, this is what you're being marked on. Does it have opening and closing paragraphs? Have you included your signature? the date, the subject, the school address, a salutation, some use of bullet points would be good, the SEOP logo, so you're going to find somewhere to put that logo, any use of shapes, get some experience and maybe put in some lines in your pages to split it up a bit if you want, and the school logo. Now, what does that mean at the moment? Well, I'm going to show you my letter that I've produced using AI. I did say we can use AI, but we've got to go through and check it to make sure it works. All right. So what I've done here is in Microsoft Word, I've set up my letter. Now, some useful tips for you when using Microsoft Word. All right. If you go up to the layout tab and go to margin, you can make the margin narrow so you can fit more on the page. By default, it often comes like that which means that everything ends up going on two pages. But if you've got a large letter, you might want to go to narrow so it makes it all fit on one page, okay? So that's in layout. The other thing that you'll notice about my letter at the moment is my address is up here, all right? Over here, it just says recipient name, title, company name, street address, city, and postcode. You'll notice it's not got anything specific in it. This is because we are going to use a spreadsheet, all right, that I gave you. So let me go to my spreadsheet first. I'm going to go to Excel and I'm going to open up a spreadsheet of one of your homeworks, okay? So if I go to open, browse, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one that I downloaded earlier. So if I go to da download addresses of businesses. So you should have all done that as a homework task. There was a reason for it because you need it for today's lesson. So what I've got here, if I just close this over here, I'll view those files later. Now, we are going to have a problem with this data. This is why I picked this one. The problem with this data is I do have their names there. All right. They're not really been, they've not really been typed in the correct format, okay? So I put, I, I'm going to enable that for editing for a minute, all right? I'm going to make sure that that is McDonald's, the way it should be written, Aylesbury Pizza, uh, Dan's, Dane's Field, what was that again? No, no e. Right. So notice I'm fixing this. All right. I'm going to leave that as that is. All right. Now, because you're going to be merging this, these need to be correct. Food, 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 entertainment. And if you're watching this video, you might want to skip past this bit. Okay. Venue, venue. Uh, I think I spelled that right. The other thing that we're issue we're missing over here is we don't really need that address line to it, although that address isn't going to work. Okay, that needs to be updated. Some of you have got your postcodes built into this as well. So you, you really need to check the formatting of it is what I'm trying to say. And the reason why will become clear in a minute. I'm going to save that because I fixed it a little bit. County bucks, phone numbers are there. If you need to, you can open up your spreadsheet in Excel and change that format to text. And what it means is it won't take your numbers off it. All right, because by default, they might be numbers. So the zero has gone off it. All right, now, now the skill that you need to know in today's lesson. So I'm going to close that spreadsheet down. I'm going to delete this out. Now, up the top here, when you go to mailings, you can go to select recipients and use existing list. 
my suggestion for you is to save that spreadsheet on your desktop where you can find it. We're all saving our work in the cloud, but if you download it from the cloud and put it on your desktop, you'll be able to access it. So I'm going to go to use existing list. This video I will upload to YouTube so you can watch it back. All right, use existing list. What I'm going to do now is to go where I've saved it. I saved mine in downloads, but yours will be on the desktop. It will open up saying which sheet you click on OK. All right, then this is the cool bit. You can actually insert the merge field. So I want the business name. If you hold down shift and enter, it goes underneath it. Address line one, enter. Address line two, again, shift and enter. County, shift and enter. Postcode. Now, if you want to preview it, watch. And I can go through. And that's what happens when you get letters in the post from, the, from businesses. They have a list of all their customers and they just merge all the data and send that out. Now, obviously, some of those addresses aren't in there and you're going to end up with extra lines, all right? So then once you've merged that, you're going to, all right, you're going to go to edit individual documents. So you go, so again, we're in mailings, edit individual documents, click OK, and that will save all of your letters in one long document. Now, in order for me to mark this, when you have finished it, all you need to do is go to file. You can do it two ways, save as, save browse, go to your desktop and save it as a PDF. All right, so you can do it that way. So I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna say letters. And that will create a PDF where I can go through it and make sure that you can do a mail merge. All right. Can you see how it's just put all of that information in for me? Yeah. What is my letter currently missing? Um, the well, let, let, well, let's double check because I've merged it before I've checked all my requirements. What I suggest you do is you check your requirements before you merge because otherwise you're going to have to go back and merge it all again. So my requirements were... Do you have space provided for the person you're sending the letter to, the address? I did put that in, yeah? Did I have a greeting? Actually, no, that was an error on my part. Look, if I could close letters down, I don't want to save that. All right. So that's the letters it generated. I don't want to save that. If we go back here, can you see where it says dear? I should have put the company name in there. All right. So I'd left that out of it. So what you need to do is check you've got everything in. Do I have open and closing paragraphs? Yes, I do. Have I got a signature? No. But you can go into paint and draw that if you want. All right. Or draw in any software package you like and just paste it in as an image. All right. The date. I didn't put the date in, did I? I didn't put the subject in. So before I merge it, what I should be doing here, right, is somewhere on this letter, subject ref SIOP festival. If I wanted to, I could even then up here put the date 23rd, 1st, 2024. That's in there now. Okay. Yes. Um, I thought, I thought, um, All right. So just go back and because that's what I'm marking you against. Have you got the subject? The school address is in the top corner. Salutation, such as kind regards, I did have. I didn't put any bullet points in there. All right. So that might mean that I need to go and edit my letter at this point where I've put uh, including. So what I could have done there is put in some bullet points to say food vendors, musicians, activities. Something like that, yeah? 
So I've broken that up a little bit. It just makes the letter easy to see what they're looking for right away. Last but not least, all right, I'll go back to my requirements. The CEOP logo, all right, you can get off the CEOP website. The AGS logo, you can get off our school website, all right? And the use of shapes, last thing I'm going to show to you is if, if you really wanted to, I'm going to make my font a little bit smaller. If you really wanted to, you can insert a shape such as just a simple line that separates the top of the letter from the bottom. That's the use of a shape, all right? Uh, let's go for the school colors. I'm going to go for the weight, make it a little bit bigger. That's the shape, something simple like that, all right? Now... Your question? I was going to say, how, how do you insert like, images without it going over the head? Right, so if I insert, say, a picture, all right, I'm just going to insert a shape at this point, all right? What you can do in the shape formatting, you can change the position, all right? But, all right, the wrap text, if you put it, you can put it behind it or you can put it in front of it. All right, and that's in wrap text behind or in front or tight so that it wraps around it. That's where you change all of that. Okay, the position you if you put it in, if you put it behind it, you can kind of move it wherever you like anyway. Yeah, and it doesn't cause an issue. So I'm going to leave it there. And this does need to be submitted today. All right.